Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Amouillac. Welcome everyone. Um, from live from Amouillac. Iluna se heiti. Iluna se heiti se tunga suiti. My name is Matthew Bryan and I'm principal of Kilutak School. My nom is Matthew Bryan and je suis le directeur de l'école Kilutak. Um, today is a very special day. Uh, this is not only our last day of school, it is uh, a chance to talk to a special guest. The Canadian Space Agency astronaut David Saint Jacques has been aboard the International Space Station for the last six months. And he will join us live here at Kilutak School from the space station. Si vous voulez pas me to tan Matthew Bryan, Kiluta Mitanangaro Kavut, Tanalo, Tamanolo, Atuti Langavata, Atuti Langasi, about Pimarica Loman, King Ulipang Wartunolo Mil San New Langaro, Amalo, Takulanga to the Tatsuming and David Saint Shark, my name, and Missunita Kindu Hara look to make that. Je pense que tout le monde est très hot à ce moment spécial. I would like to invite uh, Sarah Tukluk to come up and open us up in prayer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Ukwatukisimakoran to <laughs> Amen. Nakumik Sarah. Merci. Plusieurs d'entre vous déjà sachent le mise au jour de la mission de David Saint-Jacques. On va regarder une petite vidéo à, à peu près uh, deux minutes de qu'est-ce qu'il fait sur la station spatiale. Uh, in a few moments, we'll watch a video to see what David Saint-Jacques has been doing on the space station. Monata connetto kaina pisivu akonyongito David Senchak atuti hatate venenga ne mane susu mangalo ta connetto kain sivu so hat so hatta mangalo Le 3 décembre 2018, David Saint-Jacques réalise un rêve. 
Il s'envole vers la Station spatiale internationale pour un voyage de plus de six mois dans l'espace. Les jours qui précèdent le départ de David sont excitants et chargés en émotions. À l'horaire, des examens de qualification, des cérémonies traditionnelles et des conférences de presse. Alors que les astronautes sont mis en quarantaine avant de partir dans l'espace, le rêve devient de plus en plus concret. du 3 décembre est un succès. Le périple de David pour rejoindre la station spatiale et s'y arrimer dure 6 heures. Il est maintenant en orbite à 400 km d'altitude. Une fois à bord, c'est un horaire très chargé qui attend les astronautes. De la réalisation d'expériences scientifiques à la maintenance de la station spatiale, en passant par l'exercice physique et quotidien, et des communications avec de jeunes Canadiens de partout au pays, David doit effectuer une multitude de tâches pour le succès de sa mission. Le spectacle qui s'offre à David par les hublots est à couper le souffle. Afin de le faire partager avec le plus grand nombre, il l'immortalise en photo pour que vous puissiez, vous aussi, voir la plus belle chose qui existe dans le vide de l'espace, notre planète, la Terre. Very inspiring. Uh, now it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Véronique Marin. Um, she is David Saint-Jacques' wife. Um, she's also uh, worked in Nunavik. So, Véronique. Uh, Dr. Marin est présentement un médecin conseil au département des maladies infectieuses pour la Régie régionale et santé, services sociaux de Nunavik. Elle a débuté euh, sa carrière comme médecin de famille au Nunavik et fait toujours des remplacements occasionnels à des cliniques dans la région. So, merci, thank you, uh, Véronique Morin. Tana, tu n'as pas voulu me voir, Véronique, David Saint-Jacques, Arnaga, Tana, merci au tiers, à tous les mieux. À merci au tiers, Tana, pour venir te mettre à tous les mieux, une famille en mieux. Tana, tara, tara, David Saint-Jacques, Arnaga. David Lou, Alia Supoku, Tamani Giamne. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. So, our love story with Nunavik started a long time ago, 12 years ago. Um, and we were lucky to bring our little ones uh, here and share our love of Nunavik with our children. Uh, David and I both met when we were in high school and we had that dream of discovering the North. Um, yeah, so David, David finished med school in 2007 and took a job in Povonituk and Umiriak was uh, the little community that he visited. Um, I finished med school in 2009 and flew up to POV and I worked there for five years as a clinician and then moved to Inukshuak and now I work for the health board uh, based in Kuchuak and also from south. And we are very proud of, uh, of, of sharing that piece of our life. So that's David in POV with the interpreters. Um, David était assis à la coupole dans la station spatiale il y a deux semaines. Euh, pendant que la station passait juste au-dessus du Nunavik, puis David regardait par la coupole le lac Guillaume de Lille, puis il me disait « Ah, oh, je m'ennuie du nord, je repense à quand j'allais courir sur les falaises juste à l'entrée du parc. Euh, » Puis il me disait que c'était une des plus belles places au monde qu'il avait visité. I think that once you lived in the north, the north lives within you. And David likes to say that there's a piece of the tundra with him on board space station. Uh, yeah. Some of this peace and the beauty that's unique to the north. We're so excited to be here today, both of us. Alors, comme on disait tout à l'heure, David a décollé le 3 décembre dans une fusée Soyuz. Ça, c'est nous euh, en train de lui dire au revoir. 
Une, un décollage de fusée Soyuz, c'est très impressionnant. Alors, on sent la terre qui tremble, la lumière est très blanche, euh, la fusée s'envole. It's, it's quite an humbling experience to see uh, a rocket, a Soyuz rocket lift. There's a lot of energy. And you can't stop thinking about all the manpower and the brain power that goes into it. And then eight minutes after you're in orbit, um, And you see a little bright dot in the sky. Puis on s'approche, on s'approche. Puis tout à coup, le, le, le petit point lumineux, on se rend compte que c'est une maison. This is like our outpost, our camp in space. Um, the International Space Station. So David's been living in this house now, or in this camp. It probably feels more like a camp. For six months now, with five other crew members from all over the world. So why do we have a space station? So we have a space station because humans like to explore. We're explorers, and we always want to push the boundaries further. So if, to do this, we need, we need to learn to live in space, and that's probably the main purpose of space station. But we also use it as a lab where um, people do experiments to see what effects the space has on our bodies, but also to study some diseases that are really unique, that some, some, some effects that space has on our body is the same as some disease processes. Personnellement, ça m'intéresse beaucoup parce que ma, ma, ma clinique à Inukjuak ressemble à la station spatiale. Je suis isolée, um, je, suis, je suis toute seule, je n'ai pas de spécialiste dans ma clinique. I don't have all the technology in my clinic in, in Inukjuak. Um, That, that they have down south. So, <laughs> in some sense, my clinic feels a bit like space station. Um, and I'm really interested to have unearthed some of the things that David is working with on space station. This is a, a Canadian-made shirt that uh, they're testing whether they can, they can send all of David's vital signs directly on Earth. Um, they also have things to do blood tests on space station, all things that eventually we will be able to use in our communities. And sometimes space station is a bit like Umiwiak, there's no doctor at all, eh? So here are some of the highlights of David's mission. Uh, David a fait une, une marche dans l'espace, un spacewalk. That was really exciting. He's in his space suit, ready to go. That's him playing outside, so he got to play outside once in, in his trip. You need a big suit, it's like up north, you know? It needs to be covered all the way. That's David using Canadarm. So you see Canadarm there, which is our, our, our um, legacy to space station, uh, to catch a cargo vehicle. But what David likes the most is to just sit and watch at the Earth. The planet is beautiful. Um, from up there, uh, we can see that we're all human beings, all sharing this big spaceship called planet Earth. He really enjoys his time up there. Yeah. So, who of you are explorers? Who's been out on the land to explore the land? Yeah. Who has a remote camp? Who has a shack on the land or a camp? Who likes to camp here? Yeah, eh? You've got the explorer's feeling. Station, this is Véronique Morin in Umuyak, Nunavik. How do you hear me? Vero, I have you loud and clear. Ulaku Tumiak. So there's big cheers here. I'm at uh, Kilutak School in Umiwiak. And we'll go right ahead with the questions because we have students eager to talk to you. Hey. Why are you in the space station? 
So here on the space station, this is a laboratory in orbit. We do a lot of research, a lot of research on medicine and on healthcare. For me, it was very important to come here. You know, I was a doctor in, uh, in, the, in Nunavik, in Numuyak and in Povonatuk and other places in Nunavik. And I know that sometimes it's difficult to get healthcare when you're far away from the big cities, difficult to get medicine. Here in space, it's the same problem. We're far away from the big centers, far away from the big hospitals. So we develop a lot of medicine and healthcare technologies to help what we call remote care medicine. So anything we invent for the astronauts to take care of themselves while they're far away, we can apply on the ground for people to live in the villages that are far away from big cities. So that's a lot of our research is on the human body and the medical technologies. How do you use the toilet? Very important question. Very important question. So imagine here on the ground, you use it. This is how you use the toilet, right? The gravity takes your pee down and then you pee in water and water catches the, your pee and then you flush the water. In space, we have no gravity to take the pee down and we cannot waste water like that. So we use a fan. Imagine it's a little bit like peeing inside uh, the tube of a vacuum cleaner. And then our pee goes into a machine. And you know what that machine does? That machine cleans our pee and it recycles it, it cleans it, and it turns it into drinking water. And the next day we drink that water that was recycled from our pee. And that's a little bit like what Earth does for us. You know, on Earth, there's never any new water. It's all old water, old air that Mother Earth and nature recycles for us all the time. Here in space, we have to use a machine because uh, we don't have the trees and the oceans uh, like we have on Earth. But it's the same idea, recycle everything. Bonjour. Euh, combien y a-t-il d'astronautes canadiens et c'est possible leur nom? Their name. Alors, en ce moment, il y a quatre astronautes actifs. Il y a moi-même, David Saint-Jacques, uh, Jeremy Hansen, qui était uh, engagé en même temps que moi. Uh, il y a Joshua Kotrick et il y a Jenny Saidi, qui ont été engagés il y a quelques années, qui ont presque fini leur entraînement. Mais il y en a d'autres aussi, il y en a huit autres euh, qui, euh, depuis le début de l'histoire du programme spatial canadien, donc douze astronautes en tout. Le premier, c'était Marc Garneau, qui maintenant travaille au gouvernement. Il y a eu Steve McLean, euh, il y a eu David Williams, Julie Payette, euh, Bob Thursk, euh, il y a eu... Euh, pas oublier personne, euh, Bjarni Trigvason, Dr. Roberta Bondar... Euh, et euh, donc, 12 personnes en tout depuis le début euh, du programme spatial canadien. Et c'est Dr. Steve McLean, euh, bien sûr. How do you eat or drink? Aha, so this is interesting. So first, how do we drink? That's the most important. We cannot drink out of a, out of a glass, right? Because the water would fall. So we drink a little bit like a baby. We drink out of a bag with a straw. Here is a bag of water with a straw. And I can drink out of a bag like this. Sometimes I can even play a little bit with the water. Like that. So drinking is quite easy with a straw, but you don't want to make a mess. As for eating, it's a bit more complicated. We don't have a fridge and we have to keep food for a long time. So of course we can eat the food in a can like this. You know these cans, like you can buy at the co-op. But we have special food for space. 
It's uh, dehydrated food. It's uh, food that, from which all the water was removed. And it comes in little packets like this with uh, all the air come out. And we add hot water. And then within a minute, it becomes normal food again. This is a very special one because this is food prepared by uh, my wife, by Veronique, who's there with you. And it was sent by NASA to space for me to have some special family meals from time to time. Est-ce que je peux voir le Nunavik? Oui, je peux voir le Nunavik d'ici par la fenêtre. Euh, c'est tr très, très beau. C'est très facile pour moi de reconnaître la baie du Tusson, euh, le, le lac Guillaume de Lille, un des plus beaux endroits euh, que j'ai connus dans ma vie. On voit très bien à partir de l'espace. On peut aller jusqu'au nord, on peut voir jusqu'à Ivouivik quand il fait beau. Euh, on peut voir euh, la baie d'Ungava aussi. Euh, donc, c'est très facile de voir tout le Nunavik par la fenêtre à partir de l'espace. Did my grandfather, Danny Humalik, Danny Humalik, make the ring? Make the ring. You are wearing. You, you are wearing. Yes, actually, this ring was made by Daniel Humalik. Yeah, and you know what? If you ask uh, Dr. Veronique Marin, who's with you, my wife, she has a very similar ring because this is the ring we use to get engaged and then to get married. So we have a little bit of uh, Umiak with us uh, throughout our life. I have other things from uh, Nunavik here in space with me. Uh, I wear this uh, sealskin wristband with me uh, very often. And uh, also, um, let me get it. I have a little, for good luck, I have a little pair of mini poiluk that I have with me in space station. So I brought a, little, a few souvenirs of my life in the Arctic with me uh, up in space. There's a lot of cheering here, David. Is the internet faster in space? <laughs> La faster than Umi. The internet? No, I mean, uh, it's not very fast in space. Uh, maybe it's like it is, uh, you know, if you use a Tamani. You remember the Tamani we had? I don't know if you still have Tamani uh, in, in Nunavik for internet. It was similar to that. Not super fast, but okay. And I'm people out there with you. with you. How many people live with you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here in space? How many people live with you? Yes. We are, there's six people in the space station right now. There's myself. Uh, our commander is a Russian, Oleg. Uh, I flew with the two of us, we flew with an American lady. She's called Anne McLean. And there are three more people who joined us about two months ago. My good friend Nick and Christina, uh, both Americans, and Alexei, another Russian cosmonaut. So six people from different countries. Ah oui, oui, je voulais devenir astronaute quand j'étais, quand j'avais six ans à peu près, six ou sept ans, et j'ai vu des photos 
de la Terre vue de l'espace. Tu vois, quand on voit toute la Terre vue de l'espace, euh, ça m'a vraiment impressionné. Et euh, j'ai décidé que je voulais devenir un explorateur, que je voulais devenir un scientifique, que je voulais comprendre tout autour de moi. Et je ne pensais pas que c'était possible d'être astronaute, mais pour moi, c'était comme un rêve. C'était comme un rêve et ça me donnait euh, le courage de faire du sport, de, de continuer à étudier, d'apprendre des langues, de voyager. Et ça m'a servi euh, de guide. C'était un rêve euh, impossible pour moi, peut-être, de vouloir tout comprendre, mais je m'étais dit que j'allais essayer de devenir un explorateur pour, euh, pour essayer de comprendre le plus possible le monde euh, autour de moi. C'est comme ça que l'idée d'être astronaute m'est arrivée. How much physical exercise do you need in order to stay healthy on board the ISS? Well, we do about two hours every day. One hour maybe on a bicycle or on a treadmill or to run uh, to get your heart and your lungs strong. And then one hour on a special machine to take care of all the other muscles of your body, your legs, your arms, your back. We don't use weights, of course. In space, there's no weight. Everything is uh, weights, nothing. So we use uh, pistons, the resistance of pistons. And that way, we can actually stay pretty strong. And when astronauts come back to Earth, they still have a problem that they don't have a good sense of balance for several days. But at least their strength is there. Oui, on peut voir les avions, mais il faut prendre des jumelles. Avec des bonnes jumelles ou avec un, un, une caméra, avec un très, très grand objectif, on peut voir les avions. Et comment on les trouve? Tu sais, les lignes blanches dans le ciel derrière les avions, on les voit depuis l'espace. On voit la ligne blanche de l'avion et là, on va jusqu'au bout de la ligne et là, on peut voir l'avion. Mais d'ici, vu d'ici, ils ont l'air minuscules parce qu'on est vraiment très, très haut. On est à 400 km d'altitude. Les avions, eux, ils sont d'habitude environ à 10 km d'altitude. Yeah, we can't breathe in space because there is no air. Here, I'm inside the spacecraft. Inside the spacecraft, we have normal air. We keep air with oxygen, we remove the carbon dioxide, and we can breathe normally. But outside the space station is space, and space means there is nothing, not even air, nothing at all. So uh, the sky is black. It doesn't have any air to make it blue. So it, even during the day, the sky is black. Even when I see the sun, the sky around it is black. That's why we can't breathe, because there's no air at all. There's nothing in space. Oui, assez grande. Alors, tu vois, ici, je suis au fond d'un module, euh, le laboratoire japonais. La grandeur de la station, euh, imagine, euh, c'est grand comme, si tu compares au nursing de Oumiyak, c'est grand comme à peu près trois fois le nursing de Oumiyak, à peu près cette grandeur-là, à l'intérieur. À l'extérieur, c'est plus grand parce qu'il y a des géants panneaux solaires. C'est une station spatiale électrique. Donc, on a des énormes panneaux solaires. Donc, ça, c'est grand comme plusieurs euh, gymnases d'école, euh, la station à l'extérieur. Mais la partie où on peut vivre, c'est comme trois ou quatre fois le nursing. Can you see the Northern Lights in the ISS? Yes, we can see the Northern Lights. They're just as beautiful as seen from uh, Umiak. But you know what? They are below us. 
we are flying over the Northern Lights. Sometimes we're flying through the Northern Lights. It's really amazing when you do that, to have all these colors, green and red. They're like dancing over the Earth. They look a little bit like, a bit like, like, like waves, green waves dancing on the surface of the atmosphere. It's one of the most beautiful things you can see in space. Do you like floating or walking? Ah, uh, me, uh, you know, I like to walk, uh, but uh, coming to space, I had to learn to fly. Uh, so now I really like flying. Initially, at the beginning, it was very difficult because whenever I was trying to move, I would always hit my head somewhere or with my arm, I would hit something because I could not fly straight. I was like a baby bird trying to learn to fly, but now I've learned to fly and uh, I'm actually pretty good now. So then I can do little tricks like this. It's uh, quite a lot of fun to be flying all day long. Merci, David. Makome. Ilale, Ilale. Anna, uh, we still have a few minutes. Um, we have three minutes left uh, with you. Is there um, some thoughts that you uh, you would like to share? I went. Um, we we were. Oh, okay. We have a question. I wrote some, anyway. La, maybe one. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say, just to say, please do encourage students that they can become anything they want to become. Look, you have come so far and have made it. How you have made it that so far from Quebec. Thank you for Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you through amazing technology. And thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. You're right. Every child in their head has some dreams, and these dreams are the most precious things humanity have. The dream, the dreams in the head of children, that's where our future is. We have, we have found one last question here. How do you keep yourself clean? Yeah. Aha. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, you cannot take a shower here because if you take a shower, the water would go everywhere into the computers and the machines and make a big mess. So we, we wash ourselves a little bit like you wash a baby. So we have towels like this, just a regular towel. I put some hot water on it and then I would wash one arm like that and then wash another arm and then wash my face, wash my body, piece by piece, like you wash a little baby. And then you can dry yourself with another towel. So it's very easy to keep yourself very, very clean. Makomik, Maria, look, David, we're going to lose you in a minute. It's been good seeing you. And we'll see you soon back on Earth. Good seeing you. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, Canadian Space Agency and participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Right. Wow, wasn't that amazing? Um, so I'd like to, to thank the CSA team, Veronique, and all the students that asked questions. It was just such a, a pleasure to have a chance to talk to David Saint-Jacques, someone that we know and that has been to Amirac. 
Uh, it's just wonderful to hear from him and that Amirak still leaves a fond, it has a fond place in his heart. So I thank you to everyone that has come out for this event. Nakomek.